All right, guys, so welcome to Flow 4. This is the software that we use to um, program our Arduinos. Um, we follow this all the way through to Year 11, 12, ATAR level uh, as is part of the curriculum. It's kind of like block coding if you've ever used something like Scratch or similar before. Um, basically, if you can talk through your code or talk through what you would like your, your um, circuitry to do, then you can make the code work. So I'll show you an example, but firstly, I'll just show you some of the ins and outs of how to actually run the program. So when you open it up, you should get this pop-up. And the first thing that we want to do is connect to an Arduino. Now, if you're using a Nano, um, it actually doesn't have the option you'll see to connect to an Arduino Nano. That is fine. We can just use the Uno and that will still work. You don't need to change any of these other settings. The only thing that you won't have um, or that you'll see that is different is you'll only have five, uh, sorry, six analog inputs rather than um, eight, I believe, which is on the Nano. But everything else works the same, uh, so we can do that. Now, the right-hand side, you could call this uh, like your emulator. And in here, we can click to connect to our Arduino if you have one plugged in. We can click to download our code to the Arduino. We can see all of our values of our digital input outputs and then all of our values of our analog inputs. On the right-hand side, we can rename these. So let's say, for example, that we set um, pin 2 to be an LED, you can click this and rename it as an LED. There is also a drop down menu where we can select whether it's an output, an input, and then in some cases you have special things that occur like servos, um, ultrasonic sensors, which you would see would collapse pin 2 and 9, but we will get into these uh, much later in the course. So, we have a set of tools on the left hand side. You can see we have a start stop symbol where it gives you an option to create start stop. We have outputs. Um, where you can set them to be on or off. We have decisions, oh, sorry, delay first, which is basically a time setting of how much you would like to delay between things that occur. We have decisions, um, and these are always inputs. So at the moment, we've only got analogs, but if I was to set one of the digital pins as an input, you would see that there. Um, we can include text if you want to make annotations, your select buttons so you can move things around, and finally, your flow or your line. So if I want to move from this object to this object, I need to use the line tool. Right, next step. I'm just gonna quickly make a simple code to make your first circuit, your test circuit work. So we're gonna make an LED circuit. So at the moment you should have something like um, an LED plugged into output pin two. So I'm gonna rename this to be red LED. I can actually manually turn this on and off from here too. So once you've actually got your circuit built and you have clicked to connect to your Arduino, if you click this button on and off, you should see your LED light up um, and turn off. And that's a benefit because we can actually test our circuitry without writing or running any code. This means that we can um, change an output to a servo and position a servo to see where it, where it is. Or we could have a uh, analog input plugged in and we could see the value that it is sending to the Arduino. So like the level of light from a light dependent resistor. So we're gonna start by always creating a start um, position, we must start the program. Good practice is to always set your uh, initialization. So what do you want your code to be to start with? What do you want all of your actuators, what do you want all of your components to do when your coding starts up? And for us, when I start, I want the LED to be off. Now this could be that um, in your smart home, your ceiling fan isn't spinning or um, your garage door is closed or your front door is closed. What are all the things that are the initialized position of those components? Then what I want to do is wait for some time. I'm gonna wait one second. I'm then gonna take another output. Now if you drag your symbol over and it turns yellow, it means it'll automatically add the flow for you, which is a really handy tip feature. I'm gonna turn the LED on. I'm then going to wait another second. And then I am going to stop. So what do you think would happen with this code? And the easiest way to see is with our little play down the bottom here, we can actually run that to our Arduino. And you can see without even the Arduino plugged in, if I slow it right down, I start, it turns the LED off. After a second, you can see on the right hand side, the LED turns on, it waits a second and then it stops. Okay, so at the moment you'll see that one, once it runs through the code, um, it terminates. So it'll only occur once. If we want to create this a, into a loop, we actually need to get rid of the stop at the end Clicking it twice and hitting avoid. Selecting the line tool. 
and then after delay, we want to go back to the top so that it turns the LED off. So if I press play now, you should see it will turn the LED off. Wait a second, turn on. Wait a second, come back, turn off. Wait a second, turn on. And you can see on the right hand side here, that is occurring. And if you have it plugged in and connected, um, you should see that that will occur on your Arduino as well. So what I want you to do now is just have a bit of a play with changing the delays or see if you can um, come up with your own design of code or do something different to the person sitting next to you.